not waking up in a different place every morning. A woman named Rosie Davis is calling cheap hotels, trying to find a family room for a week. Currently, Rosie and her four children are forced to stay in their car. The woman has called all the places, but has been turned down everywhere. No hotel accepts the Dublin City Council credit card. Rosie hopes to get accommodation for at least a few days, but in vain. Meanwhile, the children start to misbehave. It's too cramped for them all to be in one car. A guy named John Paul finished the work in a restaurant and headed to his family. He called his wife Rosie and asked if she succeeded in finding a room. Unfortunately Rosie couldn't please him with good news. They have nowhere to go. 13-year-old Kaylee, the eldest daughter, does her homework in the car. Rosie was unable to finish school at one time because she had a baby. Megan, Rosie's friend, who brought some washed clothes, knocked on the car's window. Rosie thanked her for her help, complaining about her situation. Megan's life is not easy either, but at least she has accommodation. Returning to the car, Rosie continues calling hotels. Finally, one of it agreed to give them accommodation for one night. Rosie couldn't believe her luck. John dozed off on the bus. Suddenly the wife called him with good news. John was upset to learn that they could only stay at the hotel for one night. John found the hotel. Other families with young children also live here. The room was cramped, but it was better than sleeping in the car. Rosie went to get her youngest son Alfie, who was playing in the hallway. A neighbor asked Rosie to keep her son quiet. People here complain about the noise. The administration will immediately evict them if something goes wrong. The family settled in the room. Turns out there isn't even any way to cook a meal here. John planned to go to the store for groceries. Alfie continued to misbehave, not knowing where to put his energy. Later, Rosie wished the children a good night, but Millie refused to sleep without her toy. John had to go to the car to find the plush rabbit. Men near the elevator looked at him strangely. At night, the husband and wife lay together, talking in whispers so as not to wake the children. Despite the difficult period in their lives, the spouses love each other very much. Rosie couldn't sleep for a long time. She feels desperate, realizing that tomorrow they will have nowhere to go again. In the morning, Rosie hurriedly packed the things. They had sandwiches for breakfast. Millie complained of feeling unwell and wanted to stay, but the mother said it was impossible as it was not their home. Millie asked why they couldn't go to their grandmother's. The mother replied that she was not very happy to see her right now. Rosie and John were in a rush. The older children will be in school during the day, and Madison will have to stay in the car all the time. John told his wife that he would be back late today. She was upset that she would have to handle the children alone and find accommodation. Kaylee was late for school again and was angry with her mother, who was not even sure they were going in the right direction. Millie continued to complain of feeling unwell. Kaylee got out of the car without closing the door. Rosie asked Alfie and Millie to go to school and promised to find a new place to stay by evening. Rosie explained the situation to the teacher, saying that the daughter's lateness was her fault. She admitted that their family had been looking for a new home for several weeks. Rosie continued to call various hotels in the hope of finding something. However, she was rejected everywhere. The younger daughter Madison looked depressed. Later, they went to a store to buy food. Rosie had no choice but to keep calling again and again. Madison said she wanted to go to the bathroom. Rosie arrived with the daughter to Megan, who is sympathetic to her situation. Suddenly, Rosie received a call from the teacher. It turned out that Millie was not feeling well. Rosie and Madison went to get the middle daughter. Millie looked very depressed and did not answer the mother's questions for a long time, and then said that Mrs. Hennessy, the school principal, wanted to see her. Rosie took both daughters and hurried to leave, realizing talking to the principal did not bode well. Rosie had no choice but to go to her husband's brother Darren and his pregnant wife. Rosie was desperate, not knowing where to go. Darren reminded Rosie that they had to pick up their dog soon as there's going to be a baby in the house. Rosie was going crazy because of all these problems. Their wanderings continued. Rosie can barely contain her nerves while the husband works. The man receives a message from his wife who reminds him that he must meet with the realtor to see the house. Rosie and the children had a snack in the car, and then she started calling hotels again. Madison said she spilled juice on herself, so Rosie, trying to keep herself together, climbed into the trunk for their things. The husband called and said he had finally managed to get off work. John went to look at the house. Besides him, there were many other potential tenants looking for rental housing. I see. 
Do you think this place would be suitable for a family? John left feeling upset and called his wife to deliver the bad news. In order not to grieve Rosie, he lied by saying the house was bad. Rosie continues to search for accommodation for them, but no one wants to accept the Dublin City Council credit card. It's time to pick up Alfie from school. Rosie doesn't want to go onto the school grounds, fearing that Mrs. Hennessy will notice her. However, she had to enter the gate because the son didn't respond to her calls. Alfie said that Mrs. Hennessy told him to wait here. Rosie hurriedly took the children away, but not in time. The principal asked them all to go with her. While the children played with toys, Mrs. Hennessy and Rosie talked in the office. The principal asked outright if they were living in a car. Rosie lied that they were in the process of moving, but the house wasn't ready, so their family had to stay in different places. But Rosie assured that this problem would be resolved soon. Mrs. Hennessy talked about today's incident. Some children call Millie stinky because her clothes aren't always clean. Rosie couldn't hold back her tears. Mrs. Hennessy promised that they wouldn't allow other children hurt Millie anymore. The first thing Rosie did was change the daughter's clothes. All of this is happening in silence. The children look subdued. Rosie realized that she had called almost every hotel she could. They went to another school where Kaylee goes. A lot of time had passed, but the girl never showed up. Rosie became worried and went into the school calling her daughter, but she wasn't there. Rosie continues to search, but in vain. She called her husband and they agreed to meet at Rosie's mother's house, thinking that Kaylee had gone there. John went back to his boss to ask for time off again. The boss of course was not pleased, but when the man found out that John's daughter was missing, he let him go. Rosie's mother said she hadn't seen Kaylee and suggested that the granddaughter might be hiding with her friends. Rosie asked her mother for permission to come in, but she didn't allow it until the daughter took back what she'd said about her father. Rosie isn't going to do it. The mother shouted that he was a good man and father. Hearing this, Rosie left, but returned after a minute, saying that the children needed to use the toilet. Of course, the woman didn't mind. Colleague Rick gave John a ride, who was very worried about Kaylee. Meanwhile, the woman is persuading her daughter to leave the children with her. However, Rosie refuses. If she can't come into the house, then the children can't either. The spouses do not stop trying to call Kaylee, but she still does not answer. Rosie told the children to get in the car. They want to stay with their grandmother, but the mother won't allow it. Rosie tries to pull herself together. The whole family went out to search for Kaylee. Rosie is angry with her daughter because they lost a lot of time and couldn't find a place to stay for the night. Alfie remembered that Kaylee has a best friend, Emma. Maybe Kaylee is there. That's where the couple went. Emma's father opened the door. It turned out that Kaylee wasn't here. However, Emma said that Kaylee might be at Daria's, a girl who is a year older than them. Daria's family lives on the same street. Rosie rushed to that house and knocked on the door. Daria said that Kaylee wants to stay here. However, neither Rosie nor Daria's mother allowed it. Kaylee is angry with her mother, saying that she hates hotels. The girl doesn't believe the mother's words that it's temporary. The children, who saw the house where their family lived before, ran to it. They want to go back here, but Rosie said they can't afford this house. Betty, the owner of the house, was surprised to see the former tenants. Rosie lied that they had long moved to a new home and came here to check the mail. Alfie refuses to leave and throws a tantrum, not giving in to the mother's persuasions. Rosie had to literally drag her son away. Crying, the boy called his mother angry. Rosie can't hold back her tears. Life seems hopeless because they don't even have a place to live. The family continued their wandering. Rosie finally decided to call the emergency hotline. The operator said that there was a huge queue ahead of them, so they couldn't provide them with overnight accommodations. Out of despair, Rosie called the hotel where they stayed last night. But there were no available rooms there either. The children are asking for food. In addition, they haven't done their homework. The couple went shopping for groceries. Even though John works, they barely have enough money. The family is forced to have fast food for a meal. Rosie called the emergency helpline again but was refused once more. The couple got out of the car. Rosie said that the operator suggested they go to the nearest police station and stay overnight in the waiting room. Of course, they won't go there. Rosie couldn't hold back and cried. John hugged her, promising that everything would be alright. He felt guilty for not being able to take care of his family. The spouses confessed their love to each other, believing that this nightmare would soon end. The family had no choice but to go to a cafe. The kids brushed their teeth in a public restroom. 
Kaylee complained to her father. She couldn't live like this anymore. John said that they would definitely find a home soon. The family stayed at the cafe until closing time. The manager asked them to leave the establishment. Rosie never found the courage to tell the children they would have to spend the night in the car. She was the last to wash up. For a while, they aimlessly drove around, feeling exhausted. The family parked the car to spend the night. John told the wife he would go to his brothers, or else they wouldn't have enough space. He promised that they would find housing over the weekend. The couple hugged, and Rosie returned to the car. John told her to lock the door and left, but not to Darren. The man stayed on the street. Rosie and Kaylee held hands. Despite everything, they believed that their life would improve.